So um, the second part of this training, we'll be talking about economic analysis and life cycle costing. When we say life cycle costing, we are looking at the overall life cycle of the project. You know, it's one thing for you to go into markets and you buy a car. And then suddenly you realize that for every one kilometer, you are buying two liters of fuel. You never thought of it. Then to maintain the car, you need to spend hell. So, but when you do the life cycle costing of that car you want to project, you find out that if the car will cost 3 million, by the time you do the life cycle costing and then you break it into monthly payments or into annual payments, you find out that it might not be worth it. So that's the importance of life cycle costing. So it's, 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 I think it's the, it's the end thing now in assessing projects, okay? Because you are taking into account the overall expenditure or cash flow analysis within of that project. So what is economic analysis? We will always have about economic and financial analysis. Economic analysis involves formulating, estimating, and evaluating the economic outcome. Uh, when choices, economic outcome, when choices of equipment or systems are available to accomplish a specific end or goal. So when we say economic analysis, it means we are talking about choices. There are, there's choices. So we are analyzing economic, we have, we have options. So the decision to select one of these choice, choices must be made based on data, analysis, and comparison of the cost and benefit of each choice. We call this selection process economic analysis. So that's what economic analysis is all about. When you have choice, you need to analyze, you need to do economic analysis. Economic analysis forms the core methodology of making decision about whether or not a project is cost effective or which one of the several similar projects is most cost effective. This decision requires the knowledge of project costs and project benefits, also called cash flows, as well as the knowledge of interest rates and the time value of money. So in other words, you need the knowledge of the project cost. You need the knowledge to how to quantify the, the benefits. Okay, then you need an idea of the available interest rates or minimum uh, rate of return. And then you need to consider the time value of money. Money loses time, loses value with time. Engineering economy is a collection of mathematical techniques which simplifies economic comparison between different alternatives or evaluate the implementation of a new project. An alternative is a standalone solution for a given tax. There are always several ways to accomplish this given tax. The changes in the value of money over a given period, over a given time period, is called the time value of money. Some have called this the most important concept in economics analysis, and I quite agree. Time value of money changes how we analyze economic um, thing, how we analyze things economically. The manifestation of the time value of money is termed interest, which is a measure of the increase between the original amount invested or borrowed and the amount owed and accrued. Now I'm trying to lay a foundation for this. So that when I say 20% interest rate, somebody will know what I'm talking about. When I say the, 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 the hurdle rate, you know what I'm talking about. When I say considering the time value of money, you know what I'm talking about. So what are the other economic uh, benefits of economic analysis? It can save us an enormous amount of time in the procurement process because you know what projects will stand up to the competition for dollars. It is very useful material for our professional and personal lives and can assist us in getting the best deal when purchasing personal things such as homes and cars. Understanding how the value of money changes with time due to interest discounting. What is time value of money? A dollar today is worth more than a dollar in the future because money has any power. In other words, if today you put a dollar in the bank when it end interest, where it end interest, it is worth more than a dollar tomorrow. This change in value over time is called the time value of money. As an example, think of the price of a car in 1980. A car would have cost about $20,000. Today, a car is about $30,000. So in about 30 years, 
the initial 20K would have paid to third of the current cost of a car. Thus, the value of a dollar falls as time moves on. Now, there are financial terms we use when we're talking about economic or life cycle analysis of projects. And I would like us to get familiar with them. Some of us that have done MBA, this is your domain. You know it, you can relate with them. Those of us that study engineering, too, all of us are engineers, pardon me. Remember, we did something like engineering economy in school, as part of our curriculum. But now let us refresh and also kind of um, remember what, they, what, the, what those terms are. We have annual value represented as A or AV, annual value. So it's a series of cash flows, most often savings in our application that are cost evenly spaced over time. For this course, we use end of year accounting, meaning that cash flow occur at the end of the year. A is also known as the annuity amount, also called annual worth method. There's no method there, but that's how it's called annual worth. It's okay. Then the method of solving it is now called annual worth method. So annual worth or annual worth method. So when you are when you are quantifying a project based on the annual gain, based on the annual flow of cash, which usually occur either at the beginning of the year or at the end of the year. But for the purpose of this course, we are using end of the year accounting. So every December, you have your meeting, your account, you pay, for, you pay your loans and share your profit. Then we have the present value. The value of a future amount in today's dollar, dollar. For cost, it is the cost now in most cases, also called the present worth. So when we say present value, we're talking about if I enter who say market now, or I enter Kaja market, uh, Alaba market now, what is the cost of iPhone 12? That is what we mean by the present worst cost. And the method of cost, if I don't want to call it the present value, uh, we can also call it the present worst. So what is the present value? What is the present worst? Both of them can be used interchangeably. Then we'll have what we call the future, the number th the third one, we'll have the future value. It is the value of a single deposit amount or a series of payments at some point in the future, also called future words. In this case, when I say future value, I'm talking about in 2030, what is the worth of iPhone 12? Okay, so that's what we're talking about. In 2025, what will be the cost of this my duplex? So that is the future cost. So it can also be a one-off single deposit. It can also be a series of deposits. Okay. So for both the future cost, for the future cost value and the present value, they can also come in form of single one-off payment or series of payments. The life life cycle costs LCC. It say is the sum of present value of all costs of a system over its lifetime. Over its lifetime. Life cycle cost analysis, LCCA, is the overall process of including all of the associated costs and savings of an asset. Savings and cost, remember, of an asset or project over the complete life of that asset or project within the economic analysis. So when I talk about what I'm spending and what I'm getting, in form of a series payment, then I'm considering the life cycle costing analysis. Then we have a variation from the PV, present value, called the net present value. Net present value. You say that this is the difference between the present value of an investment. Is it different between the present value of an investment future net cash flow and the initial investment? I would like participants in this class to understand the difference between PV and MPV. When you hear the word net, all of us know what net, net salary, means they have removed your task, they have removed tax, they have removed contingency. So what is left? So in the case of present value is that if I understand the, the difference between the present value of an investment, okay, the present value of the cash flow and the initial investment. So the initial investment is a one-off thing, but 
that investment is bringing me in a cash flow year one, year two, year three, year four. So if I aggregate those cash flow and bring them backwards into the present, discounting the interest, if I now subtract it with the initial amount of money that I purchased that equipment, I'm going to get what we call net present value or MPV. And if the MPV is zero, it means the project is breaking even. It means the project will equate the investment at the same time. If the MPV is positive, it means the cash flow is more and it's a profitable investment. If the MPV is negative, it means that the initial investment is more. I mean, we're all engineers. So if the, if the initial investment is more, you get a negative value. Any project that has a negative MPV is a bad project. I want it to sink in. Any project that has a negative MPV is a fab cash flow because when you are comparing projects, when you are comparing my energy system now and my energy system when I've implemented my energy audit, energy efficiency measures, if the difference is positive, it means my energy efficiency implementation is the company is, is, is recommended. But if it is negative, I will leave my energy the way, the way it is. So I think that's quite safe explanatory. Then we have internal rate of return. The internal rate of return means the discount rates at which the present value of a project's cost equates the present value of the project's savings. In other words, at the point where MPV is zero is known as IRR, internal rate of return. When your MPV is zero, at what interest rates is the cash outflow and the cash inflow equal to zero. So at that point, it is called internal rate of return. And this is very important for business, for bankers. It means if you're giving somebody money or you're making an investment, this is your baseline. It means this is the minimum interest. You know, sometimes you want to loan somebody money after five years. You'll be wondering, what interest will I charge him? So, the interest rate at which you are not making profit, where what is paying you, it's what is giving you, just like what they do in Islamic banking, for instance, where there, there's no interest. So if I'm giving you loan, you might pay some charges, but those charges are only meant to take care of overhead coming from interest, yeah, time value of money, coming from inflation. I want us to understand it very well, okay? Understand it very well. Because at the end of the day, the two projects might be different, but their IRR might be the same. In other words, giving you 5,000 now and giving you 6,000 next year might be the same thing. But somebody who doesn't know will say, I'll collect 6,000 next year. But if the interest rate in Nigeria is 10% or 20%, if I, if I evaluate it, you'll find out that by tomorrow, inflation will meet up. In fact, in Nigeria, I mean, you know, I mean six months ago, we know what we're buying cement in the market until recently. So if you look at it, you find out that in the next three, in the last one year, the cost of cement have gone 40% high. Okay, so it means if I want to give you money to buy cement next year, so giving you two, two five now to buy cement and giving you three five next year to buy cement are all the same thing. So that is the wisdom in it. Then we have the interest rates. I mean, this one is, 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 a, is a familiar terms. He said this term can be used different in different ways. And I want us to think of it. I or interest rates. If borrowing money, you call it the finance rates. If you're investing money, you call it the interest rates. They all mean the same thing. Then if you're moving backward, if you are discounting backward, you call it the discount rates. So whether you call it the discount rates, you call it the hodl rates, you call it the finance rates, or you call it whatever you understand, interest rates. They all mean the same thing. Okay, so they all mean the same thing. So take note of that. Then we now have the minimum acceptable rate of return. He said the rate determined by a company or organization to be the minimum allowed required, required for investments or projects. In other words, it is their desired interest rates. It is their desired hurdle rates, or it is their own uh, discount rate. 
So banks, if you go to bank to, to borrow money, they will always tell you that they have, this is their minimum internal rate, their minimum return. Banks are into business. They are in a building. They need to pay rent, they need to pay the bills, they need to pay staff. So you can't come to bank and you borrow 20,000 and then you, you tell them that you must pay them 10% interest. No. They will tell you the minimum amount they will charge to be able to take care of the overhead or probably in quotes, take care of their greed. So that is called minimum acceptable rate of return. So it's more like a personal thing. That's it's me. You, you want to borrow money from me. I tell you, look, if I borrow you 50,000 naira, you need to pay me 70,000 naira. You tell me, no, that's too much. Why not me pay you 60,000 naira? I tell you, no, that Mr. Obi in Alaba is willing to give me 80 or is willing to give me the same thing. Or in this, our union, this is our minimum, this is our standard, okay? So that's what that is. Then we talk about depreciation. Amount of economic value that is used up during the accounting period. Depreciation is not a cash flow. It is for accounting purposes only. Then we have the payback period is simply the number of years needed to recover an initial investment. This is so important in our economic analysis. You need to understand it. See, this is the end, the selling point of your audit report. Is the audit worth it? How long will it tell me, take me to recover my money? If it will take me 50 years to recover my money, then I'm not investing because I'm not sure of living up to 50 years, in the next 50 years. I'm not sure about that. But if it take me two years to recover my money, that's cool. That's fine with me. So that's payback period. And payback period is simply savings over, uh, no, investment over savings. That is just the simple payback period, not considering the time value of money, not talking about interest. So if I buy an equipment, um, if, I, if I purchase an equipment now, 10,000, and it will save me, 5,000 each year. It simply means in the next two years, I'll get by my money. So the payback period is 10 over five, which is two. It means I'll recover the money this year, 5,000 this year, by December this year, it will save me 5,000. By December next year, it will save me another 5,000. So the payback period, the simple payback period, let me emphasize that, mm -hmm. not the discounted payback period, is simply 10 over five. So that will be two. So that is that means in two years time, I will recover my money. He said it is not accurate since it ignores the time value of money. That's the problem with it. Okay? So don't be surprised that if, if he gives me 5,000 this year, the 5,000 it will give me next year might be worth 3,000 based on the economy, based on the inflation rate, or based on how the Naira is depreciated. Then discounted payback period is calculated after discounting the next cash flow using the minimum attractive acceptable rate of return. So just like what I said, um, the MMR is like my own st standard you've set for yourself. Then we have the salvage value. The salvage value is the value of equipment at the end of the project life. Sometimes salvage value is positive. Eh? It's positive if you can sell it at the end. And sometimes it is negative if you still have to pay money to dispose it. Salvage value is usually ignored in this section, but it does not occur in a problem. Treat it as a future value. So in our calculation, we treat the survey. So if there's a salvage value for an equipment, or if I'm going to replace this transformer to a new transformer, I will now project that in five years' time, I'm going to recover a certain amount of money, which is salvage value. So I'm going to treat that as a future terms, and there's a way to incorporate it. Life of a project represented by as N is the number of years that you will receive annual savings. So when we say N, is the number of years that the equipment will last, is the number of years that I'm expected to recover, to get economic benefits from my investments. Some projects after five years, after 10 years, the project will depreciate to a level that it cannot render you economic benefit anymore. Example is a car. There's some point in, in your car, the car will start becoming an economic burden to you. Some of us that have driven a lot of cars, you know what I'm talking about. At a stage in life, life of a car, you just know that you have to sell this car. Because now, if you do the economic analysis, you find out that you are, you are spending, the outflow is more than the inflow. 
Now, these are, now I want us to put in our, our, our thinking cap very well because now I want us to get familiar. Some of us are already familiar with, if you have done MBA, um, I think you, you must have passed all this, all, all this. The present world will be represented, will be represented by P. The future world will be represent, represented by F. Rita, you have a question. The annual series is A. That sound again. Touch your earpiece. Oh, yeah, don't, don't, yeah. I'm just connecting my, my to earpiece. Um, I wanted to ask is there a difference between your ma and your wag? That's your minimum allowable rate of return and your weighted average cost of capital. Okay, that's good. Um, there might be a slight difference. There might be a slight difference because when you talk about the weighted, uh, it means you have considered the individual terms, okay? While the ma is more like a generic, it's more general, this is my understanding. Somebody might know it better. The ma is more like a, you generate the ma based on inflation, based on um, CBN regulation or, or company standard. But the weighted has to do with probably there are different sources of the capital. So you have been able to incorporate, you know, when we talk about weighted average, it means you have, you have taken into consideration the individual weights. So there could be a slight difference, but the, the weighted average is more reliable in my opinion. So I think, I think I don't even if you're okay with that. In some cases, they will be the same. Because it, let's assume you borrow from the same source or the same source are using the same interest rate. I'm borrowing from GT Bank, I'm borrowing from Zenith Bank, I'm borrowing from Fidelity Bank. All of them are giving me at the same rate based on different projects I have. So when I do the, the, the weighted average, I'll probably be getting the same thing. But if they are different, different rate and different condition, by the time I factor in all of them, I might be getting something different from when I have borrowed the same source from a single bank. Hello, Uche. Um, yeah. I, in my own opinion, I think one is more suitable for the borrower and the other is more suitable for the lender. I mean, that's yeah. the way I'm looking at it. So yeah. if, you're, if, you're the, if you're the lender, you're looking at the uh, minimum attractive uh, rate of return. But if you're the borrower, you'll be looking at um, weighted average cost of capital. That's uh, the way I look at it. Some other people might have a different view, but I mean, that is the way I look at it. So Rita, um, are you okay with that? Or do you have someone in the class that have a different opinion, please? While we're still looking at the, at the presentation, looking at what A represents and what N and I represent. Any other opinion? Okay, we move. So the A is, I want to emphasize on this A, it's very important. When we say annuity, it's like if, I, if my son in school is asking me for 50,000 uh, um, for the year, for the semester, five month semester, five, uh, semester, let's say it's five months or four months, okay. We do four, three, four, okay, five, whatever. And I will decide to say, I'm not gonna give you this 50,000 Naira in bulk because you are a very wasteful guy. You can misuse, misuse the money. I'm gonna give you 10,000 10, Naira every month for the whole year. Okay, meaning 120,000 naira in a year. So that 10,000 naira is now that series of payments. So the present worth of the money now is 120,000 naira. But I've decided to split it over a period of 12 months or 12 years, whatever like time scale you are using. Then that becomes your A, that becomes your annuity. Okay, so it's like, it's that series of payments. That's say that series of payments, which also can be influenced by the time value of money. It might not be influenced in a monthly scale, it might be influenced in a yearly scale. So giving you 10, 10,000 Naira in the next five years does not mean the same thing as giving you 50,000 Naira now. It could be less. Okay, um, okay. 
Okay, Rita, I will chat you up later. Uh, the risk is um, I don't know. Let's let's okay. He, she said, how do we associate account for risk associated with the project? I think that's the sensitivity analysis, basically. That's the sensitivity analysis for you. That's the sensitivity analysis. So I'll look for I'll, I'll look at that slide, that um, 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 um Excel sheet and I'll share with us. But then one of my partners, uh, ornament have a special course he offers on risk management using Excel template. I think that's one of the templates I'll, I'll just upload to us. Okay, let's continue. The interest rate per period in percentage, that's I. Now, interest rate can be monthly, it can be yearly. But for now, we'll be talking about yearly. Okay, when it comes to amortization or when it comes to loan, loan repayment and mortgage repayment, we can now divide by 12, which means to make it monthly. So if, if I give you a yearly, if I give you an interest rate of 12% annual, and I give you 1% monthly, it's almost the same thing, though considering time value of money, excluding time value of money anyway. So he said the, the most common engineering problem, economic problem involve, involves the use of I and N, and at least two of the remaining three terms. So out of these three terms, any engineering, pro, any economic problem, there must be N and I as constants because those ones are base variables. Those ones are established already. So the next thing is that either P, F, or A will be given. So I can be given P to find F. I can be given F to find A. I can be given A to find, I can be given F to find A. So the first three, one of them will be, you'll be asked to find it and one will be given. Then these two, I, N, and I are div by default, present. If you don't find it, if you don't know what interest rate is, use inflation rates. My advice, just use inflation rates as, an, as, an, as a guide. Or banking rate, of course, banking rates means you know already. Good. Okay. Where are we? So, cash flow diagrams. Um, sometimes it's important to plot it. I don't use cash flow diagrams, but for, to solve economic problems, sometimes you might need a cash flow diagram. He said, every project has cash receipts, income, and cash disbursement costs that occur over a certain lifespan. These receipts and disbursement in a given time interval are referred to as cash flow. Positive sign usually represents receipts. So when money is coming in, it's a positive sign. Why negative sign represent costs at any point in time? So net cash flow is receipt minus disbursement. That's it. That's it. So anything that comes into your hands, any advantage, any inflow is positive. Outflows are negative. Let's leave it at that. Since each receipt of disbursement takes place at a certain time during interest period, a simplifying assumption is made that all cash flow occur at the end of interest period. This is known as end of period convention. So this is what the cash flow diagram looks like. Okay, a, a CCFD is a drawing depicting the cash flow of a project over the life of the project and can be helpful to some energy management project to ensure that all cash flows have been accounted for. So P represents a present cash flow. It may be positive, it may be negative. A represents an annual cash flow, may be positive, may be negative. Starts at the end of the year. If we start at the end of the year is one, and continues throughout the life of a project. F represents a future cash flow. May be positive also, may be negative. It occurs at the end of some future years. Okay, I don't know what's happening. Um, okay, here we go. So this is what the cash flow looks like. So uh, in this case, we are discounting. So if you are discounting from year five, okay, if you are discounting money from year five at interest rate of 10%, or in this time around, because you are discounting, I won't call it interest. <laughs> you know, I will not call it discount. Okay. So if if if, if I'm discounting from ten, if, if I'm dis discounting ten thousand dollars from five years into the present year, based on 10% discount rate, I'll be getting something like six thousand. $209. At the same time, if I'm also 
um, you know, projecting from year one to year five at ten percent, I'll be getting like ten thousand. So what it means is that if the prevailing interest rates from the bank, from the economy, from CBN, from your borrower is ten percent, it means that if you are to borrow six thousand two hundred today, in the next five years, based on how you are paying him back, you will have paid him ten thousand dollars because you are borrowing him at a discount as a, as a, at a, at a interest rate of 10%. So the present value of 10,000 to be received five years in the future is 6,000 days. So this is also in reverse order. If I'm to borrow 10,000 now, okay, it means in six years time, in five years time, that 10,000 is now worth 6,000. So it has fallen. Okay. Now, there are, um, to make the simplification simple for us, there's what we call, in, there's what we call interest table. So we're gonna go, shortly go into the interest table now. Those interest table are simply, remember what I said here, that for you to solve any economic problem, out of these five variables, three will be given to you. Now, there's a table where the number of years and the interest has been fixed. And then one of these three has also been fixed. So it is easy for you to now find the third one. So I can be given P to find F. I can be given F to find P. I can be given P to find A. I can be given A to find P. I can be given F to find A. I can be given A to find P. So take notes. So depending on what you are given, there are five things you can look for. The first one is called single payment compound factor. And this is the mathematical um, representation. Please don't worry yourself about the mathematical formula because there's a table, just like we have the, um, what are those tables used to use those days um, in, in, in secondary school? Is, is it logbook? They are logbook and all, and all those things. And even those of you that are engineers, you will know that we make it of a table, table a lot in our design. So this is called SPSCAF, symbol payment compound factor. So that simple payment compound factor is presented this way. And what this thing means is that you are given the interest, you are given the number of years, and you are asked to find F given P. So that's what it means. He said to find the future value of a given present value after N years and I interest rates per year. And this is the formula. So the formula is if I'm to find the P, I will multiply the present factor, the present value by a certain factor. So just like you have in this for in this example here if you give me 10 there's a factor that i'll multiply with this 10000 which is about 0 0.62 it will give me see this so this is what it means so if i am given this present value and i'm asked to find the future value represented in like this formula so this formula this this value now i can find it in the interest table so this factor now is a factor of the number, the I, and the P at that given F. So all of this is a factor. So if, I'm, if I just say, have my F, I'll say F multiplied by a certain factor called the compound factor will give me the future value. The second one is called single payment present what? In this case, I am giving F to find P, okay? He said, to find the present value of a given future value, N years apart from the present time with an interest rate. So in this case, I'm trying to find the, what is the present value of a given money. Somebody is, is promising me 50 million in five years. 
What is the value of that 50 million? It's going to give me five years today. Of course, all of you agree that 50 million in five years can be worth around at something of 40 million today. That's it. Good. So the formula is I am giving P, I'm, I'm looking for P, sorry, I'm giving F. So when you see this formula, the way to remember it is that whatever that is under in this fraction, it what, what is given. And whatever that is above is what you are looking for. I will still come to where I, where I demonstrated it. Then we have the uniform series present what? Okay, represented as US BWF. He said to find the present what? Knowing the equivalent uniform annual payment. So if you are to pay me money in stages, end of every year, end of every year, what is the accumulated what of that today? And this is the formula. But as I said, don't worry about the formula. Just worry about this representation. I'm looking for the present value. I am giving the annual amount. That's, that's what this means. The fourth one, there are five of them, and we'll, we'll start. The, the fourth one is also called capital recovery factor. And it is represented by this. I'm looking for the A. I am giving the P at a certain I, at a certain N. It is called the capital recovery. In other words, I've invested an amount of money and I want to know how much will it be giving me every year for me to recover that my initial capital investment. For instance, I bought the generator for 2 million. I will now ask myself, how much should the generator be earning for me? Which is another way of saving, saying how much will I be saving in the next five years or in I, I know, next number of years for me to recover the initial investment on that. Is the sinking fund factor. The sinking fund factor is, the, is this way. He says to find the equivalent annual amount knowing a future what? In other words, I'm looking to save 50 million or I want to send my son to school in the US. And the school fees, I want to send my son in the next five years to school. Maybe by five years, it will, be, it will, it will come of age. And the school fees in America is in $5,000, for instance, here or every month. So that in five years time, I would have achieved $5,000. So this is it. So what A should I be paying? That's why it's called a sinking fund. In other words, I'll create a sinking fund. How much will I be sinking for me to be able to get it? Maybe I should use the, the, the car to cite example. I want to buy a, the latest Lexus Jeep. So that is, that is selling for five million in two years time. So how much do I need to be saving every month? Okay, how much do I, do I need to be sinking? Okay, how much will I be able to be, save, to be saving today so that in that number of years, I will achieve that? So, and that is called sinking factor. So, the next one, number six, which is the last one, is called uniform sales compound amount. Now, not all of these we're going to be using, but it's good that we include it and expose us to all of them. I think we'll just be using about three of them that has to do with economic analysis. But it's good that you have a broader knowledge of what they, how to use them. So this one is to find the future amount, knowing the uniform annual amount. What is the future amount? Okay. So in other words, how much can my company be saving based on other investments for us to be able to procure certain energy efficiency equipment in the next five years? Or how much should we be saving on our present uh, system so that we can be able to change the system to a better one. So there are many ways to look at it. And um, the next table will tell us in a chat on how to go about it. So it's, it's like pain, as I said, I've explained this before. What you have on top is what I want to know, okay? What you have below is what, given what I do know. So everything under is what we know. What is on top 
So in this case now, P is what we're looking for. A is given, I is given, N is given. So it's called time P given A. I and N are already known in the interest table charts. So in the in summary of what I've just said now is here in this chart. This is a summary of everything I've said now. Okay, these are the whole summary. Um, these are the mathematical expression, which I said you don't bother. This mathematical expression um, by tomorrow or so, or later, if time will permit, I will just show us how to use Excel to, to, to do them. Or maybe in subsequent, um, what we'll be doing, you know, this, this course is in three form. There's a, there's, a, there's a particular module that's dedicated to this. And that's what I'm trying to rush. There's a particular module that will expand more on all this and then how to apply them. So this is the summary of it. You can go through it to find it. So let's, um, let's start now. Um, let's start now. Um, let's start with this. Um, okay, so let's start with example two. Any questions so far? I'm trying to see where the question is. Okay, this is the question actually. Any question? A simple, a simple question. Go ahead, sir. Just uh, those formulas, will they be given for the exams? No, you'll be asked, is it open, is it open paper, is open book. Oh, okay. You, you have so an interest table. Uh, it's open okay. book. You can, you can, you can, you'll be given, um, if you're using Proctor, we, so Martin, we can use Proctor E, Proctor, they can Proctor you. So when you start the Proctor exam, they'll ask you to move your camera around your room to make sure nobody's there. They will not ask you to raise two files, okay? The training file and your interest table. So you're allowed to use those tables. So they will see what you have. So interest table is allowed. And then a list of formulas and where you judge your formulas and everything will also be given to you. But okay. if you're using if you're using interest table, sir, you don't need to write anything. You will see how easy right. it is. We'll start now. Okay. Then in, yeah. Thank you. That's a good one. Now, I wanted us to solve this, but I don't know how many of us that can see it. He said that um hundred thousand. Ah, no, this is complicated. So let's just start with the second one. Sorry, I will put it in a better way next time. So this is question two, for instance. Now watch it. Is it a new lighting system? This is you now, after you have done your, uh, your energy auditing, and you came, this is the question that is posing to you now, or you're going to pose, or the summary of your energy auditing, is that you are proposing a new lighting system. And that new lighting system will last for six years. And it will save 5,000 per year. The question is, how is it going to save 5,000 per year? Because you have, a, you, have a, you have compared it with what they are using before. Maybe they are using, they are consuming, um, 20,000 Naira worth of um, um, energy every month. And when you have in, you, in, implemented your energy saving measure or your energy, after your audit, you recommend a proposal that will cut that amount to $15,000. It means you are saving them $5,000 per year. So that's just how to get it. He said the company purchasing it requires a hurdle rate of 15%. In other words, the company is going to borrow money from the bank to execute. And bank is borrowing them at 15%. Even if, even if the company is going to bring out their money, there must be a hurdle rate because every company has, I mean, I mean, not like in Nigeria. <laughs> I mean, companies over there run on credit, okay? They run on system. So even if the company does not say it's our money, nobody, it, you want, it's assumed that you must have borrowed that money from the bank. So there must be an interest. If there is no interest, as I said, use the prevailing inflation rate in that country as your interest rate, and you can go to me. So he said, in order to meet the company's financial requirements, how much can they pay for the lighting system? So this is now where you now ask, if you're going to save 5,000 for them, okay, for the next six years, what is the minimum amount? The system you are recommending, how much is it going to cost? So this is what you're going to solve now. So um, to solve it, um, I, I prefer to use, please, I know you have this data. Uh, don't go to the next slide. 
Don't go to the next slide. Let me show you how you solve it. And then maybe look at how it was, it's having solved. Um, so the first thing I want to do is to bring in my, uh, my whiteboard. Okay, share. So let me bring the whiteboard so I can write. Okay. Uh, do I bring a whiteboard? Yeah. So how do I solve this question? What is the N? Or let me list all the variables. The P, okay. The A, and the F, and the N. N is given six years. And the I. I is 15%. So we are giving a value there. And that value is, we say it, it will be saving $5,000 every year. So that's A. So we're giving the annual savings, the annual income. Remember our cash flow. So it is 5,000. So, are we giving F? Anything about F? No. So we eliminate F. It doesn't come into play. How about the present value? That's what we're looking for. We are asked to how much can the company pay? Now, let me say this. You can use the word, you can use it from different perspective. I mean, um, no, no, no question. The question can be framed or the question can be poised in a, in a, in a very way that is complicated, but your job is to break it into this simple uh, analogy, okay? To break it into these simple terms. So this is the explanation of the, of the question. So what formula are we expected to use? The formula, we are looking for the present value. We know how much we're going to save every month, every year. So we're looking, how much is the minimum amount of equipment? How much, if somebody now presents an equipment, I say, this equipment will cost one billion and it will save you 5,000. Is it worth it? If somebody said we should install a variable speed drive on all our motors and with automatic whatever, that will send a signal to whoever in the, in the room or whatever, you know, any kind of technology. And he says the technology will, will, will cost $2,000, $200,000. The question is, how do we know whether this amount of money that is saving is worth investing in such a big project? So this is what you do. So we have P and we have, we are given A, okay? So you just multiply this and the interest factor will be looking for, for P. Remember everything under is what is given. Given A at a particular interest and for a particular number of years. So this P over A, comma I, sorry, that's one, comma I, comma N, is already in a table called interest table. Right? And it is also called interest table factor. Whatever, please, table factor. Mm -hmm. So, if you are giving this to solve, since you have been given the, you have been given the A, so all you need to do now is to discover the interest table. So at this point, I would like us to go to our interest table. So can you go to your interest table? I have shared with us. Can you open your interest table? Gentlemen and ladies, if you go to Google and just type interest table, you will see like, one million interest table, all the same thing. But I have gotten this one, I got this one online and it looks cool because it gave you the interest table as low as 0.25% and as high as 
um, how many percent? 60 percent. So the one in this um, slide is up to, um, um, I don't know what percent, but if you go online, that's why somebody says it's too bulky. So what I'll do, I can decide to download the one that's, that's in a kind of, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, that's not too bulky, okay, and then send to us. But then it's good that you have the whole thing because normally, let me just say this, the interest rate table is usually between 10% and 25%. All of you are doing with me. There's no bank in Nigeria. Even a uh, survivor fund is given at 9% just to make sure the, 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 the claim is single digits. So in, there's not, nothing there's any bank in Nigeria that does not give you interest, interest between 10% and 25%. Okay, so forgive me for giving you the one that's too heavy. Uh, maybe next time, if, you, if you're on your own, if you Google, just say interest table, you see like 100 of it will pop up. You can download any one you find. So for me, in this table now, how do you use this table? Let me even go to where we're going to be using it. And that is at, at how many percent? What's the hurdle rate? Hurdle rate is, 10, is 12%. Percent. Yeah? Thank you, sir. So let me go to 15% and just use it to explain. So this is 15%. Remember, I'm only looking for one interest table and I'm applying with, the, with whatever I'm giving. And my answer will just pop up. Later on, I'll also show us how to use Excel to do it. So, okay, so this is 18%, this is 15%. So, so this is how to use interest table. Those six indicators that I gave us are all written here. Is either you are looking for a compound factor, which you are compounding for the future, okay? Compounding for the future, or you are looking for the present factor, which is means you are giving P, you are, you are looking for P giving F. And these two are for single payments. For now, forget about this arithmetic gradient, these two. We won't be talking about them now. So our emphasis will be on these six. And out of these six, only about three will be recurring. So single payment, uniform payments. So if I say sinking fund factor, hmm, it means I'm giving A. I'm, gi I'm looking for A given F. Who can tell me what we're looking for? Are we looking for singing funds, capital recovery, or compound factor? Any idea? Any idea? It should be present words. God bless you. I would have asked you to put in the chat so that others will also um, do it. Thank you. Because we're looking for how much will the company pay now? So we're looking, for, so it's a present world factor because we are also, find, we want to find P given A. So this is N, number of years. Gentlemen, I don't have a headache teaching this thing because I'm teaching, I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with engineers. So it makes my life easy. Nobody will say I've not used table, whether electrical engineer or mechanical engineer or whatever. So this is the N. So what's the number of years? What's the N? Six. Six years. So the factor is now what? 3.73, 3 3.784. So that is the, the table factor or the present word factor. And this means we are using the present word method. That's it. Because we're making use of the present word factor, we are using, we are, we are using, so someone can say, use the present word factor. You know, when, when somebody speaks those grammar, they used to confuse us, know what he's talking about. So you don't even need to tell me to use the present word factor, but me, I'm going to use the present word method, sorry, because I'm making use of the present word factor. So that's how it works. So the interest table says 3.784. Then I go back to my, where's my, my board, my right board. Okay, so, so it means that the table factor, okay, which is this, the table factor is 3.784. So it means the present worth or the minimum amount of money that the company can invest would be the A is 5,000 and the table factor is 3.784. So I have my calculator. Remember, Chima said we should come calculator yesterday. 
So this will be 3.784 multiplied by 5,000. It's giving me $18,920. It means any machine that is more than $18,920, it is not profitable. So if I want to, so if I want to go and buy the machine, I must make sure that the machine is less than this figure. It means that the company is making a profit of 15%. And it means the return on investment should be 5,000. Please, any question? Let's go to the second question. Any question? Please, if you don't understand it, I am confident it's understood, but notwithstanding, if you don't, if you don't get it, please let me know. Um, just to just to add, so okay. I discovered that uh, in case you don't have the table, the interest table, you can also mm -hmm. get that table factor using the formula in that uh, formula uh, chart, rather. Do I, do um, I okay. I'm trying to locate uh, one of the slides you showed to us. Okay. Okay. That should be slide. Uh, okay, slide twenty-two. So where you have the yeah. math math expression. Okay. So if you don't have the table factor or the interest okay. table, interest table, you can use formula. that formula directly, yeah. and yeah. then you. John, some yeah. of us are not, so, no, no, <laughs> just just in case. I'm okay, just, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> they said they uh, said there are so many ways to kill a rat. So. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, please. <laughs> you like your brain is still hot. We are listening, ma'am. Sorry, um, yeah, um, Mr. John. The ah. reason why the table factor is better is because it's faster. Mm -hmm. The table factor is faster for you. You when you are doing that exam, you don't have that time. So no, I, I said I said in case you time. don't have so, in case you don't have so the you table. Don't want to go to it. <laughs> you must have the table for your own group. <laughs> you know, 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 that's one. Sorry, I'm digressing, but it's just one minute digression. That's yeah. why I'm comf I'm not comfortable with our educational system. We keep telling people a closed book exam, even design exam. When people are doing open book, how do you want the civil engineer to memorize? Let's not go there. It's okay. Let's continue. So, uh, John, you understand what I'm saying? Life, life, no, no, I, <laughs> no, I completely... Life, life, is, life is meant to be easy in bros. <laughs> Rita, I completely agree with you. I completely agree with you. No, no, no. No, 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 Mr. Jonah. It is you, the, the teacher that I'm talking to. This same oh. standard we are condemning. Mm -hmm. I can assure you the, the, that rigorous that, um, process we have been through has made us a better person and has made us competitive, even with our decayed educational system. I am telling you based on experience. This is, is not... Okay. I mean... <laughs> There's a negative side to it. That's a, that's a positive side. I'm telling you based on experience. Yeah, but that's a, that's a positive side. There's a negative there's a ne side to it. There's a negative side to it, uh -huh. but I'm telling you, uh -huh. you are still not the positive side. Are very competitive. I, I agree. Sure. I agree 100%. I agree. But how about the negative side? <laughs> Let's continue. Like, you want to say something? Before, before we continue, uh, what I have is this uh, compound interest table. I don't have that, uh, the other table you're talking about. This, this one? The compound. Uh, wait, let me share my screen. Wait, sorry. Interest table. The yeah, one you said. On, hold on, hold on, hold on. Just hold on. Okay, this one? Yes, that's what I have. Okay, no, what John is referring to is the doing it manually. Do no, I'm not talking about manually. I, I need a table to do it. Can I, this table you is not. You don't have this? I have this. That's all. That's the only thing we have, sir. So I how scroll, do we get? I scroll, uh, down, I scroll down to fifteen percent. Oh, fifteen percent. God bless you, sir. Fifteen percent, uh, six years. You know that's why I said that two two parameters will be are fixed. Two parameters are fixed. 
then one parameter is given and one one unknown, one one known, one unknown, two fixed. I can't get my 15%. Five. Just no, scroll down. After 12%. Okay. Scroll down. Okay, so um so let's go back, let's let's look at the slides. Yes. Okay. okay, thank you so much. I've seen it. Thank you. Okay, sir. So this yes. is it. So so this is how it is solved. So let's go to the second question. Uh, okay, look okay. at this one. You know, some of the things you'll be seeing today, tomorrow in Jinachima will find time and take us through every everything. Mm -hmm. One good thing I'm confident about is that this program is is well is loaded. So no fear. So when you see a boiler economizer, you'll be wondering what is that one. Tomorrow you know what it is. In subsequent training, this course will be coming will be the last. Okay, but we just want to spike, spike, spike our, our, our spike us a little bit. So now a boiler economizer is something that, that will help economize the boiler, you know, the heat and everything. We cost twenty thousand. We cost twenty thousand, and the lifespan is five years. How much would the economizer have to save each year to return twenty percent? So as an auditor, you've done your you've done your auditing and you're recommending. To purchase a boiler of twenty thousand, I mean nobody will like to do that until you prove to them that the boiler will save a certain amount of money. The question now is, how do you set a baseline? So the question now is to set a baseline of what that boiler must save for us. Is to set a baseline of what that boiler must save for us. You know, to be able to recover that amount of money. Is that understood? Somebody asked the, asking the question. Hold on. Please zoom the question. Okay, okay. Um, let me switch over to PowerPoint so I can zoom in very well. Because I've been doing on, um, um, what do you call it? Um, PDF, because thing wasn't loading when we started. My system upgraded, updated itself today. I don't know. Just at the point of starting this, when I wanted to start the training. Start to update. Oh, yeah. No. Uh oh, sorry. Let me open it on PowerPoint so I can be able to zoom it. Uh, where is the formula again? Sorry. Just hold on. Somebody said I should zoom it so that. Well, you have it on your system. So, sorry. I, I suppose you have it in your system. Uh, okay, energy efficiency, cost, and economic analysis. Why is it on PDF? Hold on, please. Good, okay, there's a PowerPoint. Okay, so I can zoom it well. So we're going to question number three. So look at it now. No, three. So now, yeah, three, yeah, yeah, I understand. Two, three. The boiler economizer will cost 2,000. It will cost this. Eh? This is, your, this is your, what you're recommending. And it will last for five years from the producer, manufacturer. So how much would the economizer have to save each year to return 20%? So who can tell me? OK, let me go to my um, box. What are we looking for? What are we giving? Put in the charts. What are we giving? What are we looking for? What are we giving? What are we looking for? So I'm going to do something. I'm going to copy. Don't mind me, I'm just copying. Make life easy. So I'm waiting. Okay. okay. 
Okay. Somebody say, Rita say, uh, we are looking for annuity. Oh, you say we have P, and we are looking for annuity. We are looking for annuity. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's correct. So we have P. Ah. Uh, and what is P? Twenty thousand. The annuity we don't know. What's the number of years? Six, five or six? No, are you sure it's five? Five. Five, 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 five. Five, good. What's the interest rate? 12. What's the banking rate? What's the inflation rate? What's the hodl rate? What's the investment rate? What's the discount rate? Whatever you use. What is the company profit rate? You can manufacture anything, but that's what it means. So, um, so A will now be what? Of course, what you are giving multiply by the table interest factor table, which will now be A divided over P, giving I and giving N. Okay. So here will be A over P. Okay. So let's go to our table. So we'll go to our table now. So which of the table are we using? Uh, if I go to my table, I have to also share screen. And go to my table. So I'll first of all go to 12%. It's 12%. Mm -hmm. And um, five years. So good. So uh, we are looking for A giving P. So in other words, we are doing capital recovery. So in other words, you are telling the firm, this is how to recover the capital. Two, seven, seven, four. Okay, so two, zero point, sorry. 0 0.2774 is the, cap, is the capital recovery factor. Find A giving P. So we are, we are now telling how much minimum can we be saving every year? For us to pay for the capital, for us to recover the money spent on the capital. As, as engineers, if you find that value, you also give your own markup. Okay? You give your own markup. I mean, I'm mean, talking about in practical sense. So two, 0 0.2774 is the capital recovery factor. So I go back to my whiteboard and say, let's apply to it. Good, so that is 0 0.2774. So the annuity now becomes, okay, 20,000 multiplied by 0 0.2774. Okay, I'm going to multiply it 0 0.2774 divided, multiplied by 20,000. 5548. Five, five, four, eight. It means that I must prove, I must prove in my energy auditing that the, the, the money they will be saving every year must be $5,548. I must prove by showing what is present, what is coming. So that is why the economic aspect of auditing is so important because you need to prove how the money is going to be because sometimes they are going to borrow money because if they say they don't have money you can ask them to go and borrow money in the bank and bank will give them interest rate of say 20 percent and 20 000. so you tell them look this is the amount of money we are supposed to be saving for us to recover this money any question yes so in practical terms yeah i, I hear you when you are doing a an analysis like this for a, an organization, do you factor in things like inflation to reflect what may likely happen in the future? Mm -hmm. Or does this interest rate, so to speak, does it take into account inflation? Of course, it's taking into account inflation, sir. That's the, that's the, the main thing, sir. You must look, you must do the worst case scenario. Now, how do you know it? Some of us know about this um, CBN meeting. They call it MP, MP something, I don't know. Forgive me, you know? Monetary policy something, yeah. Thank you. So the monetary policy, that's why it's important. In, 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 uh, in America, they call it Fed, Fed meeting. You know, people, the whole world will, stay, will be on standstill because 
Fed is about to proclaim something. So the same thing applies to the CBN. All as most of us are not financially um, literate, you know. If not, that sets the because banks will now leverage on that to set their interest rates. So it, what it means is that if you are doing a project that has a lifespan of say ten years, mm -hmm. it means that you have to you should be able to forecast what will happen within that ten year period, exactly. so that your forecasting or your prediction or your calculation should be close to about correct. Thank you. You know why you are even stressed? Yeah, that's, that's correct, sir. But why are you even stressing yourself because of the Nigerian factor? Let me tell yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, in most countries, uh -huh, yeah. Uh -huh. economic. In, most <laughs> in most countries, Fed will increase interest by 0.1%. <laughs> so, just 0.1%. In fact, in fact, most times, it's normal than 0.5%. But it's only in Nigeria, forgive me, that, yeah. I mean, we all know. So from, from your own experience, because you have been in the industry for a while now, okay. Okay. considering the policy somersault of CBN, how does, it, how does it impact in terms of the kind of predictions you make? Well, I think um, that brings us to the issue of sensitivity analysis. You have to do some sort of sensitivity analysis uh, uh, okay. by, by looking at some extreme values, okay? And then maybe you might not use the uniform factor. You might you might use, um, maybe in the next, if it's something that has to be 10 years, okay, the first five years. But you know that these things are not cast of stone. I don't, I don't remember, I know that banking rates have been on 18, 15, 20%, as long as I am I'm an adult. So using a 20%, in the case of Nigeria, 25% might not be a bad, a worst case. I mean, this engineering will always project, will always approximate. So it depends on the sensitivity of what you are doing, sir. Okay. Yes. Okay, so any any question? Let's go to the third question. Any question on this? Mr. I'm sorry. I'm very bad with names. But what I wanted to say is, this was the issue, I, this was the reason why I asked the question that I asked before, when I talked about how do you account for the risk associated with the project? Because I, what, I, what I'm familiar with is that when you are estimating your WAG, it accounts mm -hmm. for what you call the risk premium. So you have your um, risk-free interest rate, then your risk premium. It's the mm -hmm. addition of that that gives, you, that gives you your WAG. And that is what most times when bank is going to loan you money, these are the things that they look at. For instance, what, what has been your borrowing history and how have you been paid? Have you had mm -hmm. issues where they have to come and drag you and everything? What, what, what is the likelihood that they will get their money back from you? Mm -hmm. If the likelihood that they will get their money back from you is, 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 is small or slim, they want to tend to give you a higher interest rate because, yes. you're, because they see that mm. the risk involved in lending you that money is high. Yeah. Yes. So by the time they include that, that high risk premium, the interest rate you are going to get is going to be higher than what others are getting. And that was why I was asking, you know, the question between your ma and your wife. So again, I'll just um, leave it at that. <laughs> so that we don't That's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. I, I've, I've learned something from that. And um, it just goes to underscore why banks will be drag, will drag to, to issue you money, especially. And if they are to give you, it will be on the very high side. So back Sorry. to the, Yeah, I can hear you, sir. Uh, no, what's, what's, what is WAG, please? WAG, she mentioned WAG. Weighted average cost of capital. WAG, WAG can sometimes be used as the MA, depending on the context that you are using it in. And as um, the other um, participant asked about, you know, how do you account for inflation? Again, there's what you call your, um, your real discount rate and your nominal. So maybe when you are doing your analysis, you, you need to mm. clearly state what, what mm. type of discount rate you have used. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Just to mm. make your... your your clients or whether is it you yeah, understand yeah. what you have taken into account. Mm -hmm. So the real yeah. interest, the real interest or discount rate must have taken into account the inflation rate, but the nominal does not. Yeah. But usually the 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 the, the, the difference. Rate is, 
it's uh, I think it's, it's the difference of the inflation and your dollar. Mm. Well, it's not much. Normally, it's not more than one percent. Okay. Now, um, I have a small challenge now. Um, this is almost like six, but I have like two more questions to solve so that I will know that I've covered um, a broader range. So let's, can we just move at the fast phrase, phase now? Um, now look at this question now, as a fourth question. In fact, question one is for us to solve, um, but maybe not now, maybe at the end of this class. Okay, so this question four, now look at this. You see, a company has asked you, in this time around, you have, you, have, you have alternative. A company has asked you to look at two projects. Each project will last eight years. Two alternatives based on your auditing report, a, a specification from Germany, a specification from France, or a local specification, whatever arrangement. He said the project will last eight years. The first project costs $125,000 and will save 33000 each year. The second project will cost $153,000 and will save $46,000 each year. The company has a uniform discount rate of 12%. The question now is, what project would you recommend? Is it possible to answer this question? Can I have a clear, from the in-depth analysis I've given, how do you think we can proceed to answer this question? Sorry, I have a chat. Please share. Oh, 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 oh. Apologies. I left the whiteboard. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, sorry. Anytime this happens, just, just let me know because if I'm to share the white screen, I think I'll have to leave um, the screen sharing. So look at the question again and tell me what you understand. Please, I want you to participate. That's why I'm asking this question. I know as well, I can just move in and just solve the thing. But let me hear you from us. Okay, I will just, I will use a very simple approach, which will be benefit to cost ratio. Considering that the projects both have the same discount rate mm -hmm. and they are meant to last for the same number of years. Okay. So if I go by very simple analysis, which is mm -hmm. the benefit to cost ratio, then the second project will be recommended. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Who again has a, a, a suggestion? Who has it? But but um John, I, I don't know if John has, has just spoke. You you would have been doing that when you can rationalize the the investment cost, look at the investment cost, 125. The second one is 153. So why would you go for 153 instead of 125? Even though the yeah. 153 is giving you back 46,000. Yeah, so I did a, I did a uh, benefit to cost ratio. So for the, for the second project, it was 0 0.3. Why for the first project is 0 0.26. So what is me is that for a given dollar mm. of cost, you get more returns. Okay. So the second project gave me point three. I'm just using okay. a simple analysis. No, good. Here. good, good, good. <laughs> See, your answer is perfect. So now what you do as an auditor, you do that based on simple big back period and do with another formula and do with another formula and substantiate beyond reasonable doubt that you are okay. That's a good one. Somebody said, Rita said, using MPV, good. But there are other things. In fact, let me tell you, you can solve it by three, three methods. Eh? John just told us, give us one. Me, I know two. I know two. Somebody else can know the, third, the fourth one. Now, in your reports, you list all of them and just come back to the, come to the same conclusion. Now, the first method is MPV is the most generalized one. I can do the MPV, but is it MPV on what? That's the question. I can say... The, 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 the project is saving, the first project is saving me $33,000 and it's giving me one twenty three dollars for over eight years. What is the net present value of $33,000 over eight years presently? I subtract the two, I'll get my MPV. Then I do the same for the second one. 
I supply the two, I get the NPV. The one that has the higher NPV becomes my problem, becomes the solution. That's number one. I can also say, what is the annual worth? It is saving me $33,000 every year. What is it costing me? So I can also annuitize $125,000 yearly and then subtract $33,000 minus the annuitized cost. You know what I'm talking about? We're talking about cash flow now. The inflow is $33,000 every year. What is the outflow? So these are the two methods I know. So the, the other one can be called the, the annual watch method, while the other one will be called the present watch method. Okay, so do, to now make the comparison, that is where MPV comes in. So let me be quick. It's Sorry, please, six. can I ask a question? Go ahead, please. Do you I'm use listening. annual work if the project life is the same? Can you still use the annual work? I, I, I was thinking annual work is often used when the project life is not the same. Yeah, you can also use it if it's the same. Yeah, you can use it both. Yeah, you can, yeah, you can use. The second question, question number five, is actually what you're asking. <laughs> when the years, number of years are different. And now you, that means you'll be constrained to use that. But you can also use the MPV, notwithstanding. And it can be proven. So let's go. So this question, the first thing you do is solve the two questions, the two pro get the value for the two projects and then subtract. Are we, are we good to go? So let me go back to my, um, what do you have it again? The whiteboard. So this is the whiteboard. So I, I guess um, I, can clean, I can clean up this. We've all, we've all had it at, inside, it's still there. Uh, what do I do with it? Do I save it somewhere? Then I have to... Okay, so this is it. Um, so let me start by saying this is project A. Okay. And the other one will be project B. Okay, now I will just do for project A, I'll, I'll now copy. So project A, we are giving the A, we are giving the P, okay? So what is the A? Three thousand. Three thousand. And what's the P? Uh, 125. Okay. <clears throat> Why are we not using Naira now? This international, this international training, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but for the B, <laughs> you don't know we are looking beyond Nigeria. So the this what the what's the cost? Oh, project B is uh, 153. I want them to know that I'm from Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> so, you see, the other parameter applies. So, um, so what, what should we look for now? For the present words. Yeah? Yeah, we can still look for P. Let's watch what I write now. We're looking at the P, in this case, what is the P of, are you getting me? What okay. is the P of that guy? Uh, investments. What's my, this, okay. So what's the P of that, even though I'm giving P. So in that case, this P now, not, not, not to cause confusion, I'll call it initial investments, okay? Are we okay with that? Okay. Yes, not to confuse, not to confuse the question. Yeah? Not to confuse, con, confuse, yeah. So initial investment, yeah. So what's the present worth of this? So that means we're looking for P, we're giving A. So uh, let's go to interest even. I won't be, I'll, I'll, I'll allow us to work it out. So now I'm sure it's, so I'm sure it's sinking in. 
everybody open your interest table if you're in this class. Uh, go to your interest table, um, 12 percent under eight years. What do you got? What did you get? You can put in the chat box also. Please just participate. percent eight years. Put in the chat box, please. Two percent eight years. We are giving P. What are we giving? What are we looking for? I'm waiting, please. You have it on the chat. I should I should bring up the chat. No, no, no. I say you have it on the chat. Is it not the interest? Oh, okay, the chat. The okay, you know interest still factor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Only one person. I want Omo. Just one more question, one more answer, and I will, I will go. We'll roll. Okay, I've gotten two, and they said, and they said the same thing. So, um, if both of us are saying the same thing, then let me believe it's true. But let me just um, let me look at my interest table. Oh, oh, sorry, I'm having a challenge now with my Zoom. Just hold on. Just hold on. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. So, um, this is eight years. Um, we're well, using the present words given a so 4.9 c8. So that's correct. So, what's the final answer then? So, 4.968. Yeah, yeah, 33k. Thank you. And what's the final value? One six three nine four four. Okay. Okay. So the so this is the what the this is the the present what of this. So if if either I give you you save us this money or you give us this money today cash it's the same thing. That's what it means. Okay. Let's go to this pro other projects. What's the interest table factor? Is it not the same thing? Yeah, just follow the same approach. So that would be 46,000 times uh, 4.968. Okay. 228,528. 228. Two to eight, five to eight, five to eight. Yeah. Yeah, for uh oh, what am I? Okay. So, yeah. what's the MPV of this project? Minus investment. MPV. Thank you, sir. One, six, three, nine, four, four. Minus what? Uh, one, two, one, two five, five, 
triple zero. What's the value? Uh, nine four four minus one two five zero zero zero. Three eight nine four four. Three thirty-eight thousand nine four four. Four four. That's the MPV. And how about the MPV of this one? Um, two two eight. Two two eight. Five two eight minus what? One five three zero zero zero. And what's yes. the value? What's the value, sir? Seventy five something. One o oh, three five two eight. Am I correct? Yeah. One o oh, three. Five two eight. So it means eh, it means that the net income you are making from that investment as of today is what that's eight thousand nine hundred and forty-four. While in the second case, the net amount you are making as of today, the automatic increase in the share value of the company, whatever parameter you use, is uh um, what do you have? 103, um, 528. So which one is better now? Obviously, project B. Yes, sorry. So project B is best. Now, because of the one, is that okay? Now, we can go on and on and on and on. Eh? Sorry. Go ahead, sir. The second project, 228, mm -hmm. minus 153, mm -hmm. zero, zero, zero. We'll give 75, 528. 75, 528. I was almost wondering, because I've taken this course before. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not looking at the slides. <laughs> 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 okay, so let's right. go. To, is it understood now? Let's go to the next question. Now, yes. there's a problem now. Eh? Okay, um, <clears throat> this is after six. I didn't promise us seven o'clock. Oh, 615. 615. <laughs> so, yeah. but the good news is that the whole thing in this thing is so self explanatory. Look at what we just saw now. So, based on the foundation I've made now, if you go through this one, like this one now, this is the same thing you do. He said that the company consider two projects. The first project cost this, and we save this each year. The second project cost this, and we save this each year. Project one will last 12 years, and project two will last nine years. That's just the difference. So what, what, how do you think we'll proceed? Is it not the same way? OK. Is it not the same way? Yeah. yeah the difference is when we now come, to the to the years, what do we, what should we, what will we do? We will now I'm trying to look for my slide my 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 this thing. Okay, the difference is that if I come here, I'll put nine years, eh? And the other side, I'll put what twelve years. So I'll evaluate this one based on twelve years. I'll evaluate this one. Based, so that means I'll be using I'll make it of um the same table because the same interest rates, but different number of years in my data. I don't think it's worth us solving it. It's just a waste of time. Absolutely. It's not worth solving, please. Okay? So let's go to the next one. It's not worth solving, gentlemen. Um, the next question is, okay, look at the formula, the, the solution. Hmm? So here, 12 years, here, nine years, that's the difference. So look at this system now and tell me, this is the last line. The remaining questions, you can solve them. If you have any problem, as we have always promised, chat me up. Then if for adventure, you have space and time, in May, 6th to 8th of May, we are doing another module on this training, where our focus will be on this. So we will be solving all the questions in the, in the exam. You agree with me that one day is not enough for them for it. So if you have time that day in May, two months time, 
you, you can participate in that class. Maybe I will discuss with you, but maybe we can give a discount, a very, very good discount. So our, our job in that exam, in that class, will just be the economic analysis. So we'll bring in like tens of questions and real life questions and then try to solve them. So before we go on my last line, can someone tell me how we proceed on this? Look at it critically. You know, how you frame the question. Please, uh, we need to see the question. I can't see Oh, anything. forgive me. There it happened again. Yeah. Let's interact with this. <laughs> Tell me what you think. So we apply the same NPV method. Okay. And so your the initial investment will be fourteen thousand, and then on annual basis we'll be getting two thousand three hundred. That will be our annuity. Okay. But again, we have uh, a cost of seven hundred dollar per year for the license. So okay. we subtract that from from the annuity. No, 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 no. You subtract it from the savings. Uh, okay, the savings is the, that's what I call annuity now. That's the 2003. Okay. Oh, oh. No, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So you get the net annuity, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yes. Okay. okay. So okay. this is my, just basically subtracting this 2,300 minus 700 annually. The difference should be one six. I'm okay. Correct. Yeah. He says he says your company requires a this. He said, "Will you recommend project? What will you get?" So if you get you a do? if you get a positive value for your NPV, you recommend. Mm -hmm. Or if you mm -hmm. get negative, then you don't need to recommend that project. Please, do we have a contrary opinion? Any contrary opinion? I'm sorry. I just wanted to ask something, please. Mm -hmm, go ahead. Let me have my headset. One second. I had to step out for a couple of minutes. Okay. Um, have you talked about the life um, life cycle um, cost analysis? Okay, but that's what we've been doing. <coughs> like this one now is today or tomorrow. That. We've done it. We've, that's what we've done today. Please. Oh, oh, okay. Today beginning. we're talking about yeah. it today. Yeah, okay. No, no what I'm asking today. is because okay, because the person who talked about negative NPV and positive NPV. So maybe that's maybe, what maybe I'm you're asking. not around. Maybe you're not around there. Sorry. We we, we did. Yeah, we because did I, I yeah I told it like yeah I, it's okay. Oh okay. Oh. Uh, no, no, it's okay. I just wanted to. And I, 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 and I spoke, and I spoke extensively. I use um, everyday example to explain life cycle analysis. Just like no, it, yeah, no, it's okay. What I'm saying is that uh, he, because he said if, if you have a negative MPV, you uh, don't approve. If you have a positive MPV, you approve. So uh, yes, while I agree with that. Mm -hmm. It depends on the context on which you are making that judgment. If you are dealing with cost, mm -hmm. a negative, the one that has a, a, that is lower, is more acceptable. And at times it can present itself in a negative form. So I, I just wanted that clarification. Thank you. Thank you. And, and now you are, you, are, you are beginning to reason like somebody who is doing an investment grade audit. You also said it when we started. You ask those questions if you are doing an investment grade audit. Where you start to understand the, the environmental implication, the market implication, the you know all those other social incentives. Uh, in, in addition, when you have two or more alternatives, mm -hmm. if you have two or more alternatives that you are looking at implementing, 
-hmm. then a more a less negative value will be a recommended option yeah but for the problem we are looking at is just one option so yes yeah yeah i mean you are you are saying engineering mathematics <laughs> negative fifty thousand is smaller than negative ten thousand <laughs> Uh, thank God we are all engineers. We're all engineers. Yes. He makes the training so sweet. You don't stress yourself so much. I mean, it's just that you need to bring people back, just like Chima did. You need to bring people back from their comfort zone, you know, and come to reality. No, but but that's a practical. Like it's just what she explained now. That if mm -hmm. you have, two, if you are looking at two projects and mm -hmm. both of them give you negative, mm -hmm. then you have to go for the one that gives you less negative. And she was saying, if both of them give you negative. Mm. or they are close, you now mm. start to look for the environmental and social factor. Exactly. <laughs> you start looking at the third, the, third, the third dimension to it, because you are looking at the second two dimension. There's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's another dimension to the whole thing. I mean, if I'm to install a VFV drive from Germany, I need to spoil business with my client in France. I won't do it. Okay, so we are talking about a holistic... Approach and now. that's the investment grade audit we're talking about. Remember when we, say, when we started, we talk about level one audit, level two, level three. And we said at level three, the different level three is addition of level one and two, but three now start to involve environmental, environmental, social, uh, marketing. I mean, since things like in a, an, an exhaustive list. Okay. Yeah. So, sorry, to, please. Okay. Sorry, please. I have one more question. I just want to ask you. I'm sorry, I have to bring you back. Okay. Now, I, I'm not sure, but just to clarify, when you did the um, life cycle cost, you dealt with the. You also dealt with um, NPV, like for instance, you buy an equipment. Okay, for instance, you have two options, like I made, and you want to know which will be would be which will be cheaper in terms of the cost that will be incurred in the process of using that equipment. Say for instance, I have two equipment, one will cost me 10,000 now, another mm -hmm. will cost me 5,000. But in terms of maintenance, this is gonna cost me certain amount of money. That is gonna cost me certain amount of money. Which project should I pick? Uh, I, I, I don't know if you treated, I'm just asking we treated, if we you treated, treated something, something like yeah, that. We did some, look at the board, are you seeing me? We did something like this. Okay. But what you're now bringing is like mm -hmm. a, a small variation, variant, a variant of it. And one of the things I have emphasized on this training is that <coughs> you can coin the question in your own way, but the methodology is the same. You can use the annual work method, mm. you can use the present work method. So in this case, now you say it will save us this. So it's as good as me extending this question and saying maintenance and operation cost will be this. So the first thing I'll do is I'll subtract the operation and maintenance cost to get the next OM value. Okay. Yeah, and quite agree. This one can quite also agree. come. This one can also say the the computer will cost one twenty five thousand. Software will cost five thousand per mm -hmm. annum. I will mm -hmm. I will bring mm -hmm. it, I, that yeah. five thousand. I will bring it into the present world and add it to this man. I don't mm. understand. Maybe I'm, I'm, I'm so, producing an antivirus at five thousand per year. The mm -hmm. cost of the project cannot be one twenty five. It is not. I will have to bring in, determine the present world value of that antivirus because the antivirus is a part of the software or the hardware. So what we have done in this training yes. is to give you a broad example. Now you as the engineer will now sit down and coin it. And that's one secret in solving question in AEE. The question can be presented in one form. You will reframe it recoin it in your own template and the template boils down to what we've done before list all the parameters eh? let me put it again yeah Number one this is p what is the p what is the a what is the f what is the n what is the i then we say that when you are not around Sorry, we say that out of these five, you will be two are fixed, N and I are fixed. And then one, two <clears> out <throat> of the three will be given. You must know P and A, or A and F, or P and F. And that is why 
when you now go to your table, your table is now telling you the, sorry, I'm trying to go to the table again. Okay. The table is now giving you the six options you have. Are you dealing with a single payment? Are you dealing with a uniform payment series? Even if you are dealing with a single uniform payment series, are you calculating for sinking fund? Are you looking for capital recovery? Are you looking for compound interest? The compound amount factor? Are you, are you looking for the present world factor? So if you use this one, it means you're using the present world method. If you use this one, it means you're using the compound amount method. If you use this one, it means you're using the capital recovery method. If you use, it, okay. if you use this one- Yeah, thank you. But okay. yeah, yeah, sorry, please just, so what do you do when everything involved is all cost? No savings. They are, every information you have there is all cost. For instance, the, the equipment cost five thousand dollars. Maintenance yes. cost is um, five hundred dollars per year. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. um, whatever um, software cost is. What do you do when you it's at, all look, cost? All the information you. you have is all cost, and you have to project. Thank you. The, look at okay. Maybe you, maybe you are not around. We will solve this. Look at the question we just solved now. Sorry, uh -oh. I'm having issue with it. Um, the if everything has to be cost, by the way, in fact, you need to call, to quantify everything. That's what we said about auditing. We say identify, uh, discover, and quantify. Then, like in this case now, <coughs> you say the project will cost this, and it will save this. Okay. Now, in the cost aspect, in the cash inflow, cash flow, <coughs> you have to. List all the possible costs. Let me go to our cash flow diagram. Look at our cash flow diagram. Yeah? No, not even this one. If you go to our cash flow diagram, you see that you need to list out all the possible costs. Yeah, this is it. This is our cash flow. In fact, some cost might be, might not be annually, might not have that consistency, might not be uniform. So you in year one, what is the whole cost? In year two, what is the whole cost? So in every cash flow, you deal with two things, inflow and outflow. So which one is inflow? Which one is outflow? Which one is receipts? Which one is inflow? That's not the most important. So the whole inflow, you put it to one side and find the net. The whole outflow, you put it to one side and find the net. And those are the value. So you, at the end of the day, you come up with the net. I'm, I'm trying to look for where, where that where we explain it that way. But we'll look at it. We say every project has cash receipt income and cash disbursements. So what, what, what are the risks? What are these disbursements? What are the receipts? That is where your interest is. So all the cash must fall into any of these two categories. If they didn't fall into any category, then find a way and customize them into any of these categories. So what is now the net cash outflow at the end of the day? So if laptop costs 100000 Installation cost ten thousand, software cost thirty thousand, and maintenance cost ten thousand. The total cost of this of the of the laptop is one hundred and fifty thousand, provided that this amount will be incurred yearly. But if it's not incurred yearly, I will need to bring it back into a common reference point. That's the word, and that reference point could be at the present or in the future. Okay, so um, tomorrow is going to be a very, uh, tomorrow is weekend, and um, I hope all of us will have time um, um, because we're going to be dealing with um, the energy efficiency measures in building an industry. So all this now about boiler, chillers, this. In fact, tomorrow we have a slide of um, up to 100 slides. So tomorrow is going to be huge. Uh, it's going to be interesting. So please, three o'clock is three o'clock. Um, it's oh. weekend. So any other question? Tomorrow please? is it going to be three to six? Yes. Tomorrow is three to six. Yes. Thank you. Well, I'll tell, I'll tell the resource person to be as fast as possible, and and believe me, the, the material I've been shared ahead of time. I've shared the material yeah. ahead of time. Yeah. So if you can go through it too, it will make life easy. Yeah. Yeah, except, except for some of the few calculations. So the, the, the thing is to just um, 
and expand on what you have been given already. And let me also encourage us, uh, learning is a continuous thing. Um, as you continue, you learn more. Okay, Chim, are you around? Yes, I am. I'm here. Uh, it's been a very um, interesting okay. um, discussion. I noticed that uh, few, people, few, few people were not uh, making comments. I don't know, maybe they just understood everything that you said, but um, I will encourage everyone to always um, contribute. We're all learning. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah. So your contribution, it means a lot. Yeah, and again, knows. your feedback, your feedback also means a lot to us. You have, um, you have Uche's, Uche's contact email and number. You also have mine. So feel free to reach us at any time um, with your feedback. If you have questions, um, comments, contributions, you're always welcome. So um, thank you for your active participation. I mean, let's